tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Let us pray. O oh, living God, this morning begins in darkness, the day dawns in quiet. Come God, arise, bring forth the sun from its slumber and Jesus from the tomb. Break forth the holy light, your blessed child. Greet us on this morning of mystery and hope. Amen. Please join in singing, Jesus Christ is risen today. All right, here's Christ the Lord is risen today. Christ is our light. Thanks be to God. Holy One, we give you thanks for your care throughout all of life. You showed your care for us as you created us in your own image. You showed your care for us as you showed your love to Sarah and Abraham for their faithfulness. You showed your care for us as you led your people out of slavery through the sea to freedom. You showed your care for us as you led your people through the night with a pillar of fire. You showed your care for us as you gave us the light of Christ, our morning star, to be a light to all creation. Christ is our light. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, for our redemption, you gave your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross, and by his glorious resurrection, have delivered us from the power of the enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him who died and rose again for us. Grant this, we pray, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please join us in reading Psalm 16 in unison. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. 
my boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he's been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said greetings, and they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. He is not here. He has been raised as he said. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Normally I say that to a church bursting at the seams with families who've gathered to celebrate. Little girls in new pastel dresses, little boys with new ties everyone in their finest, rejoicing that the darkness of Friday has given way to the wondrous light that is the living Christ. But today I'm sitting in my house and you are sitting in your house. Families have been warned not to gather. Traditions have been disrupted. Cousins who look forward to the annual Easter egg hunt have been disappointed. Mothers who are accustomed to preparing a feast don't have the usual crowd at the table. And some sit home alone. And all around the world, people are living in fear. It's not our usual way of celebrating the resurrection of our Lord, the most important moment in all of history. And yet I think that today with all the strangeness and disruption, with all the sorrow and fear, we have much more in common with those first disciples than we usually do on Easter morning. They were sitting in darkness and disappointment. While we have been ordered to stay at home, in next week's reading, we're going to hear that the disciples had locked themselves in. While we are living in fear of death by illness, they were in fear by death, of death by those same soldiers, those same crowds, those same leaders who had put Jesus to death. Easter morning all those centuries ago did not begin as a celebration. It began in darkness and sorrow. The women had gone to the graveyard to complete the burial rituals that had been abandoned on Friday. They didn't go there in search of the living Lord, 
They went to the grave absolutely expecting that Jesus' body would be there, just like every other person they had ever known who had died. All of the hopes they had pinned on Jesus had been crushed when they saw him breathe his last and give up his spirit. All that was left for them to do was mourn. They didn't go to the tomb planning their Easter celebration. They went to the tomb in grief. And for many of us, these days are creating a kind of grief, whether it's the grief of a loved one lost, or the grief of traditions abandoned, or the grief of livelihoods laid waste, or the grief of milestones missed, even the grief that comes from missing your friends, missing your mornings at the coffee shop or your evenings, wherever. For many, it's difficult to see exactly what we're celebrating right now. It's difficult to get into a festive mood. It's much easier to focus on what we have lost, what we fear we may yet lose. But that is where we find the true miracle of Easter. Because Jesus didn't arrive in the midst of a celebration. He didn't appear with trumpet sounds and bursting lilies and majestic choirs. He arose out of death, out of the grave. He didn't join a party in full swing. He came face to face with those in the depths of despair. Those who were convinced that all was lost. Convinced that the best they could hope for was to get back to their normal lives. This brief interlude of being followers of Jesus would be forgotten. And if they survived the immediate threat, they would get back to their fishing boats, back to their tax booths, back to whatever else they had left behind. That's who Jesus encountered that first Easter morning, people lost in darkness, people who knew the cross, but did not yet know the resurrection. And we might feel a little bit like them right now. We might be struggling to see any light. As the days turn to weeks and even months, we become more and more tempted toward despair, more and more tempted toward giving up, more and more tempted toward anger and hopelessness. When we aren't in a bursting church, when we don't have the smell of lilies in our nostrils, when the house isn't noisy with grandchildren eager to find those hidden eggs, it doesn't feel quite like Easter for us. So thanks be to God that Easter doesn't depend on our feelings. Thanks be to God it didn't depend on the feelings of those first disciples. Thanks be to God that he didn't look upon those forlorn people 2,000 years ago and decide that what came next depended on how well they had listened to Jesus and how confident they were that he would do as he said. Because they hadn't listened well and they weren't at all confident. What came next was entirely up to God. What came next was entirely out of our hands, unrelated to our feelings. And what came next is that Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. He's defeated sin and death once and for all. He's overcome the doubt and despair that infect our hearts. He's overcome the fear that would separate us from God and leave us hopeless. He's overcome the darkness that would suffocate us. Easter is Easter because of the cross. It's the victory of life over death the victory of righteousness over sin, the victory of faith over doubt, the victory of hope over despair, the victory of forgiveness over condemnation. That's what we celebrate this day. Those women went to the tomb in grief and they left in celebration, having seen the risen Lord. They left in celebration because there was no dead body there. They left in celebration because he has been raised, as he said. He had told them what came next, and now it had happened. And he has told you what comes next for you. He has told you that the grave won't hold you either. 
Your sin and death have been defeated. Your doubt and despair will be left in your tomb. Your fear and uncertainty will be cast off with the burial shroud. And you will be raised to new life, just as he said. You will join in the celebration that has no end. You will sing Alleluia in endless praise when you are finally united with your Savior once and for all. Until that day, you have a foretaste of that celebration in his Holy Supper, and you have a glimpse of that kingdom in the communion of saints, the one huddled around your screen and the one sheltered in place throughout the world. And with that communion of saints, even on this day, when we may not be feeling victorious, even on this day, we can sing, endless is the victory thou or death hast won. Because the victory over your sin and death has been won. And because Christ Jesus lives, you have everlasting life awaiting you as well. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. This time we will have a remembrance of our baptism. Hopefully you received the message and were able to gather uh, candles for the members of your family. We will be lighting those at the end of this portion of the service. In holy baptism, our gracious heavenly father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. In the waters of baptism, we are reborn children of God and inheritors of eternal life. When we were baptized into Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, we too might walk in newness of life. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This time I invite you to light the candles of the members of your household and each hold their candle as they are able. Let your light so shine before others, they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. This time I invite a member of the household to say the words of institution and lead the communion service in your home. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> heavenly Father, in this time when the world shrouded in darkness we give thanks for the light which is christ send your spirit upon us that we might bear witness to his light and sing songs of praise even in the midst of fear lord in your mercy hear our prayer Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are suffering throughout the world, those who are ill, those who are dying, those who are grieving, those whose livelihoods are in jeopardy, those who are living with uncertainty. 
We pray especially for our friends in India, Mexico. Comfort your people with the holy and certain hope that our lives are in your hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would bless our homes. Grant that they might be places of peace and rest in the midst of fear. Make them safe for all your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we get to our closing hymn, just a couple of announcements. First, a happy birthday to those who are celebrating birthdays this week. Madison Keck, Sally Anderson, Grant Laid, Jonathan Anderson, Denise Hauger, and Bree Luckman. Uh, if you have a chance, send them a message, a greeting of uh, birthday joy, if you have the opportunity. Um, we don't know of any anniversaries today. Uh, and one other announcement, um, this week on Wednesday, we will resume our confirmation instruction uh, through Zoom. So we will do that online. So uh, please, confirmation families, be checking your um, email for um, a link to the Zoom meeting so that you're students can participate in confirmation and finish out the year. Um, we will also see about adding some other pieces like our, our morning Bible study uh, and other, um, other opportunities via Zoom. So please keep an eye on, on uh, Facebook and on, um, and on the church website and your email for more information about that. Finally, following our service this morning, I'd invite you to take a picture of your families uh, with their candles or your households, I should say, whoever happens to be there. Some of us will have to take selfies, uh, but please take a picture uh, with your baptismal candles or your remembrance of baptism candles and either post that on the church Facebook page or send it to me by text or email and I will post it on your behalf. Uh, and now we will close with our closing hymn, Now All the Vault of Heaven Resounds. Thanks to all our musicians this morning. Uh, Appreciate your assistance. All right, here is now all the vault of heaven resounds. <laughs> Thank you.
finally, don't forget uh, to join us. Step outside of your front door um, at noon today and join in singing Jesus Christ is Risen today. Happy Easter to you all. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed.